back in June so that uh, the questions don't step over one another. Just raise your hand. I'll see you, and I'll call on you. I want to thank you all for coming today. I also want to thank Director Baker for being here. Um, he met, he last uh, visited with you in an extended period of time in mid-June, and he wanted to get in front of you here again as we get ready to start our fall season. So I want to thank him for his time, and um, he has a few remarks for you, and then we'll turn it over for questions. So, Mr. Baker. Thank you. Thanks, uh, everybody, for being here. And uh, no real agenda for today other than just have a chance to, to sit and answer any questions. Uh, that you may have. It's been an eventful summer, uh, certainly at WU and in the athletic department, but also for the Big 12. And so I've not done any kind of availability uh, post uh, Big 12 expansion and all that and thought it would be appropriate to, to do so before we get kicked off here. So um, had a great uh, summer, got my girls moved here. Uh, so they're both uh, here and I'm, I'm hoping this is a wood desk under here. There's been no tears. Everybody's happy and healthy and and uh, they've started their school year and uh, they're getting all settled in. But I'm excited for the fall. Um, have already been to men's soccer uh, exhibition match. I've already uh, been to a women's soccer uh, match. I'm excited to take in my first Mountaineer football game, uh, walk the tailgates, partake in lots of sweets, maybe a pepperoni roll or two. I have a high commitment to eating, so uh, I'm excited to do that. Um, just some things that are on our horizon. Uh, we're probably a couple months behind where I'd hoped to be, been on some of our initiatives um, just because of the distractions that uh, we have, we've dealt with. But uh, staff structure, we're really looking at that, especially at the senior leadership level. So my goal would be to restructure in a way that allows more efficient and timely decision making um, and also not have quite as many direct reports directly to me because we have a, a need for revenue and, and I need to be a part of solving that by getting out and seeing our donors and, and seeing people. So I've tried to do a lot of that, uh, but what I don't want is to bottleneck decisions back on campus. So you can look in the coming weeks for us to uh, announce um, a little different staffing structure and, and how we're gonna operate. Uh, we're launching our strategic visioning and initiatives platform. Steve Urias is helping me be the point person on that, but really it'll involve all aspects of our department. And uh, so we're, you know, it's easy to say, for instance, we want to engage our letter winners uh, in a more meaningful way. What does that mean? That may mean that we want to do more reunions and we want to have a point person for those reunions so there's consistency in the way they're done, but we'll engage our letter winners in helping us decide how they could be more, uh, more engaged. So that's just one small example of a whole list that will be across our entire department. We'll really lay out a four or five year plan of these are the things we want to fix and the timing and the organization of how we want to do that. Uh, and then we will assess our facilities and, and look, we've done a lot of facility work the last few years, but we know we have more work to do. Um, when you look at our strengths here, uh, the fan passion and loyalty, I, I think is our biggest strength. And we have a lot, we have a, a tremendous following. Um, any metric you, that the Big 12 has shown us where they do valuations of, of the uh, programs in the Big 12, we're always at or, or near that top grouping. And it's because of the affinity. But one of our weaknesses is our ability to really monetize that loyalty um, in a way. So for example, this last weekend, we had the 1891 Club uh, event in here. And I had two or three people ask me about buying suites. We don't have any suites to sell them. So we've got to figure that out because not only is that a revenue problem for us now, but we really cut ourselves off from some prospects of the future. And uh, so we, we're really looking uh, at things like that as we assess our facilities. So with that, I'll kind of close in, in terms of opening remarks and uh, answer any questions that you may have. Um, but uh, I love fall. Fall is uh, everybody's undefeated. Hope springs eternal. Everybody's going to make straight A's. Everybody's going to win national championships. But the energy that that brings on campuses is tremendous. So my only complaint is good Lord at the traffic in Morgantown once the kids got back here. So uh, that's uh, changed my, work, my morning commute considerably. Questions? All right, so, so Ren, the, your answer could probably take an hour, but the Big 12 summer and the four editions and the, how you came to realize how it was happening, give me the Reader's Digest version of all of that. Yeah, Commissioner Yormark's a, a really uh, excellent communicator, and that's a big part of leadership. So, so he's had regular meetings um, throughout that process. 
uh, really, um, there's a, a high frequency of communication in meetings until you get to uh, uh, the goal line, and then everything goes quiet once it gets to the goal line. No, there's only one way you can ensure confidentiality, and that is you don't tell anybody. So uh, that last day or two, as you're watching the ups and downs and twists and turns, on, you know, in real time on social media, and you don't know what's true and what's not true, I was with you, um, uh, and, and he was candid and transparent we got to a place where he said listen this will probably be our last meeting until um you're getting a text from me saying that it's it's going to happen um and so uh I, I think when you look at what where we were at in the big 12 two years ago and i wasn't in the league at that time but i'm a lifelong big 12 big eight fan um the league was on the verge of extinction um I certainly uh, would not have wanted to wager anything of value, not that I ever would, but uh, uh, on, on the survival of the Big 12 at that point. You guys probably felt the same. So when you look where we're at today, in my opinion, clearly um, in the top three of, of most stable, best position conferences moving forward in, in college uh, athletics, um, it's a remarkable job, remarkable job by the leadership in the Big 12. Uh, when all of that happened, um, and certainly that started even with Commissioner Bowlesby, but but Commissioner Yormark's done a great job of being aggressive, um, of of helping make sure that everybody is aligned and on the same page. Um, and uh, there were a lot of twists and turns and a lot of contemplation, but ultimately uh, our group was pretty aligned in if we could get the four corner schools that made the most sense for the future of the league and we should be patient and see if that if there's an opportunity to do that and that's that's where the league uh, ended up and so I think we're a big winner uh, in this round of conference realignment and as you look at what's happening in the TV markets and, and there being uh, shrinking resources um, you know it, it, for the first time really in history um, you look at the markets we picked up, and not just the market, but the penetration in those markets, uh, I think we're positioned very well for the future. And Brenda, this is, I mean, a really broad question here, but what, what do you need to improve, expand, enhance across your athletic department to really hit the ground running in a, in a bigger, more vast, yeah, I, you know, I hit on this a little bit in my opening remarks, but we've got to find a way uh, to uh, bring in more revenue. That, 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 that's fine. We do not have a spending problem. Um, if you look at, um, compare us across a variety of, of spending categories, we're very efficient with the dollars that we have. Uh, but, but we've got to eat, breathe, uh, sleep, and think 24-7, 365, how can we bring in uh, more revenue? You go back and look at historically when our teams across the board have been the most successful, I would venture to say we probably were uh, around uh, the average, if not a little higher in the league in terms of budget. We're not there right now. Um, and and uh, we've got to find a way to do that. Um, there's lots of, lots of uh, buckets. It's not all of them are, are big buckets, but they all add up. So. Um, if that's outside uh, revenue, if that's finding a way to, to get more money coming in and licensing, um, if that's uh, you know creating more premium space opportunities. We had the, the uh, Club 35 open up. Now we've got um, what we're calling Club Mountaineer right now that's going to be open this fall. All of those things are, are, uh, are uh, additions to that revenue stream. But but my job is to find a way for our coaches to have the tools in, the tool, in their tool belt that they need to be successful. And so that's going to be a big part of what um, we spend a lot of time thinking about strategy-wise. Yeah. What, um, what, what did your conversation with Arizona State's athletic director end up being like? Because that must have just kind of come out of nowhere when you said that. I told, I told him, man, not like, I know you said this on Saturday, but I didn't really get hit with it till Sunday. I'm at home trying to get my Jesus on with my family and catching shrapnel over this. Uh, no, we had a great, uh, we had a great conversation and, um, I've known Ray, not extraordinarily well, but we've known each other for a pretty good while. I suspected he didn't mean that the way it was, it was taken, but, um, you know, it, it definitely hit a sore spot, um, with all of us who are, are proud of West Virginia. And, and as somebody who really had not spent a lot of time in the state before I moved here, 
Um, I'm a I'm a champion for people giving West Virginia a chance as a place to live, as a place to visit, as a place to vacation. Um, it is a beautiful place full of some wonderful people, and uh, not enough people know about it. Um, and so um, he was gracious. He was kind. I mean, he started the call by saying, "I'm really sorry." Uh, I, you know, I, it was an attempt to. To, to be funny, President Crow knows I hate cold weather. He was giving me a hard time. I was giving uh, him a hard time back, and he said it just didn't land like I, I thought it would. And he said I knew pretty quickly it didn't because the first person who admonished him was his wife, he told me. so. Uh, but we had a great visit. He was very gracious. Um, he was in Dallas um, and uh, doubled down on that graciousness. Um, you know, we teased back and forth a little bit. Some of the other uh, ADs gave him a hard time. Uh, so he know he he knows that if he could go back, I don't think he would say that. Um, uh, but I did tell him. He said I probably won't get a very warm welcome when I come to Morgantown. I said I think it'll be the opposite. You better tell your logistics people how they're going to get home all your pepperoni rolls. I said all West Virginians want um, is is for people to give them a chance and and uh, to love it here. And so I said I think you'll see a lot of kindness and a lot of people going out of their way to show you how great it is here uh, when you come visit. scheduling around, do you have a preference with how it would work out? I know there's a lot of different options on the board, but do you personally have a preference? Yes, and that's partly contingent upon what the conference schedule looks like, right? So in this environment where we have nine conference games, um, that means uh, some years you're going to have five home games and some years you're going to have four from your conference schedule. Uh, I think it's important to the state and to Morgantown that, that we always, uh, at a minimum, have six home games, but we'd like to have seven. So you start to do the math on that, and it, it starts to restrict a little bit your, your opportunities. It's why that one FCS game is important, because it just ensures that you can get an affordable home game uh, on the schedule. Um, I've, I've said before, and, and I believe this, I think having a Power 5 regional rival on the schedule every year is important. Um, you know, we would probably prefer that be Pitt. That that game, it's not. You know, I'm not a brain uh, surgeon, but it didn't take me very long to figure out that's a, a, a very important game to uh, our fan base and to theirs and to this area and this region. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, but in years when it's not Pitt, who's another regional rival that we could take on? Is that Virginia Tech? This year we have Penn State. Um, and then, can we get a meaningful group of five uh, FBS opponent? Um, that either we we pay some money to come in here or we do some type of two for one uh, scenario. But you you would like for it to be a game with some kind of regional uh, uh, meaning uh, meaningfulness. Um, so you know one of the MAC schools, um, you know maybe a Sun Belt school. Um, we're not uh, we're not eager uh, or or probably willing to go to Huntington, but we you know I don't know that we would say no to Marshall if they wanted to come here. Um, and so, you know, those are, um, you know, if, as you're building a schedule out, that's probably the perfect schedule. It's challenging. It has some meaningful games, but it, it doesn't beat your team down to a point to, to, to where it may, they're not ready to go come conference time. Along those lines, uh, Big 12 structure for the non-conference games, would you like to see divisions, odds? Is there anything you prefer? Certainly. Um, we need to look at scheduling um, in all sports, but but in particular the sports that don't charter, right? So let's um, – when you talk about football, for instance, would we like to cut down on travel and football? Sure. But those CFP spots are going to be so meaningful, especially in the expanded playoff, that um, you start to lock into divisions or pods in football and, and, and you can – put yourself at a disadvantage uh, in, when it comes time to getting those CFP spots. And so, for instance, let's just say you play in divisions and you have a, di and you have a championship game. Um, you could have somebody win a division that hurts somebody in the championship game uh, and knocks you out of a CFP spot. But if, if you're set up in a way where you take your top two CFP ranked teams to your championship game, um, that that's a little bit different. So so take that aside for a second because there's a lot of money and, and things tied up in that. You but but you look at soccer, 
baseball, you know, teams that are not flying big charter jets and getting home that night. They're staying the night and they're getting up the next morning. They're catching a 6, 6.30, 7 a.m. flight. They're going through connecting airports because Pittsburgh has some directs, but but a lot of places you got to connect to. Um, if we can schedule, uh, my opinion is if there's an opportunity to schedule in divisions or pods or whatever, that that's something that we need to fully explore and, and fully look at. Coaches should be engaged in that conversation. I think the student athlete advisory council should have a voice in that conversation. Um, but uh, I, I've been pretty steadfast in, in our Big 12 conversations that that's something that we need to look at uh, when it comes time. Now, to be honest, we're just now starting those conversations because it really didn't do a lot of good to die. It's, it's pretty detailed, complicated work. So you really, you don't want to do it unless you're expanding. But now that we're there, there's subcommittees looking at that. And um, I think I'm on uh, the men's basketball one, but every sport will have a, a subcommittee that'll look at different scheduling models. Go back to like 2011, 2012, when the school was transitioning from the Big East to the Big 12 to begin with. Uh, I'm not sure what the percentage was, but obviously, like the travel budget went up a certain percent, probably significantly. With these new additions now, Westward and the league, have you guys even begun to look at what more is it going to cost WVU? You know, like you said, soccer is the teams that don't chart. I mean, obviously, you know, it's you know to go further west. It's, yeah. Uh, our financial uh, folks in the athletic department are starting to model some of that out just so that we can understand it. Now, so much of that is you're trying to look at different scenarios, but if we can wait a few weeks, we'll know the scenario because this is happening so fast, we're going to know pretty quick uh, what, what those schedules have to look like. And so um, – uh, but, yeah, we're starting to model that uh, some. And, and, listen, there's a possibility – depending on how we schedule in certain sports, we could reduce cost, right? I mean, like if, if we could lock in and, and uh, play in divisions, uh, you could potentially cut some cost. Um, but uh, we're, there's also a lot of models out there where it could go up. And so we've, we've got to really drill down on that um, because that is a – it does affect us in a more disadvantage, disadvantageous way than it does other teams who might be more centrally located in the league. Ren, in terms of increasing uh, finances and revenue, naming rights would seem seemingly be an uh, area. Your thoughts on that? Are you, do you think you're near something? What's, what's the process yeah, there? We're exploring that in all, really all of our venues um, and have had some third parties engaged just to do some valuations on what that could bring. Um, certainly, it needs to, the juice needs to be worth the squeeze because uh, – People get pretty attached to certain names on venues, and and uh, and, and I get that. Uh, but they also get attached to winning, right? And winning takes, as I outlined earlier, it takes money. And so uh, it's something that we're evaluating and and definitely are, are going to look at. And I think it's an opportunity for us, given um, the reach of our brand, uh, given that there is no – if you want to advertise your company in the state of West Virginia, there is no better uh, – uh, organization to partner with than WVU Athletics. I mean, that's period. We have the biggest reach of any uh, organization in this state. And so um, if there's an opportunity to monetize that, we, we've got to look really hard at it. And we are engaged in getting some early evalu uh, valuations to, to say, okay, these are the venues that we think could have some corporate naming um, or even some individuals to name. And uh, here's what we think those would bring in from a dollar perspective. so to speak, has distracted you quite a bit, I presume. Uh, but you still have two coaching situations that are, you know, in flux. Uh, you've had a chance to evaluate uh, Neil up to now and what he did in the offseason and the like. And you also are not sure what, what's, what's going to happen in basketball. Where do you stand on all that? And what, what's, your, what's your feeling? Has it changed? Has it gone anywhere? Yeah. Uh, and we had uh, baseball in the middle of all, all of this spring, uh, too, and I'm excited about the, about the transition there and I'm excited if we still have a place for Coach Maisie, who's done an amazing job to help us tra transition into that. Um, let's talk about football first. I've been really impressed with not just Coach Brown, but all of our coaches here, and I've spent one-on-one -on -one time with all of them. Um, I've tried to get over here. I think I've made all the scrimmages and several practices. Um, 
And uh, so I, some of those scrimmages are closed. If you guys want me to call and give you a scouting report afterwards, I maybe could do that. Coach Brown wouldn't like it very much. But, um, but uh, you know, um, I'm excited. I feel good about where we're at, feel good about um, uh, the team, uh, their resolve. Um, uh, I, I, I think – the prognosticators not having uh, very high expectations is, has helped motivate them. I think it's helped motivate all of us, really. We want to go out and prove, uh, prove people wrong. Um, but there's a lot of things that are done right inside this, this program. Um, when you uh, just look at it, I, I, I talk a lot about my core belief is you have to value the player, the person over the player. Um, and if you value the person first and foremost, then eventually you'll get – the um, the full abilities out of the player, and uh, this staff does a great job of really pouring into developing people, helping them grow their character, helping them have success a academically, helping them really plan for the rest of their life. And so, there is a lot of positive things going on at this program. We know that we have to win games. I mean, you, Coach Brown has said that. I, I read his commentary all the time. He, he knows where we're at, and everybody knows that that that's an expectation. Um, but uh, I, I think um, I, I'm really proud of, of the way that this team has kind of come together and, and um, there is a, a great um, camaraderie between that group right now. Uh, men's basketball, you know, I think Coach Eilert's done everything we could have asked him to do and, and would hope he would do. Um, you know, during that time, uh, there were lots of people – that they were offering lots of opinions on what we should do and the timing of it. But the reality is when we had the situation we did in a coaching change and everybody and the portal was op reopened for everybody, um, there was going to be some roster attrition. That was going to happen no matter what we did or how quickly we did it. Um, you have basically unrestricted free agency at the least opportune time. And so uh, I knew that. I knew that the day as we were dealing with that in real time. Um, but we, we tried to move as quickly as we could to make the best decisions we could. Um, you know, hopefully people understand the logic behind that. Maybe they agree, maybe they don't. Um, and then we've tried to give Coach Eilert everything that he needs to be successful. Um, and uh, so he's made, you know, some changes and additions to his coaching staff. Um, they've been able to make some additions to the roster. Uh, I think up to this point, and you know, we haven't played a game, and he hasn't, uh, you know, we, he's been in his off season in terms of practice and, and that kind of stuff. But I think up to this point, he's handled everything as well as you could possibly ask, and um, I'm really proud of of the work they've been able to do. No, because I don't open up for for that. You know, I mean, I'm pretty. Uh, you know, somebody tries to call me um, about one of our jobs and the job's not open, I will very quickly cut that off and say the job's not open. Uh, I, I don't think that, that's – I'm a little bit old school that way. I, I don't think you talk to people uh, or lobby or campaign for a job uh, when that job's not open. And so, um, yeah, there hasn't been a lot of that, uh, you know, in terms of lobbying on the basketball front. But but I also have uh, been pretty clear that I'm, I'm not uh, – I'm, I'm not willing to do that right now. Uh, season hasn't even begun. We haven't played one game. And Coach Eilert, his staff, those players, they deserve my attention and support to be on them in this season and what we can get accomplished. And there will come a time and place when we evaluate what's what would come next. Uh, uh, one, one final question uh, about the transfer portal and uh, the waiver situation. Does that have to change? I think what we went through this summer is the first time somebody's really went through that at that period of time, and <clears throat> I I think we have to address that in some way, shape, or form. I mean, that was uh, – I had colleagues all over the country asking me how we were unpacking and dealing with that because you never know. It could happen – you know, it could happen to you. Um, but um, that was a pretty difficult situation on everybody, on our coaches, on our players, on other players. I mean, we had players who – uh, very much wanted to stay here, but as you lose more and more, they also, you know, if they've got one year left or even if they've got two years left, they want to be somewhere where they feel like they can make the tournament and have success and, you know, be surrounded by the pieces they need. And so, you know, it becomes a little bit of a of a, uh, of a a snowball rolling down the hill sometimes. And so um, I, I do think it's something that we got to look at uh, and, and address. And, and I've been pretty clear that I'm not um, – 
I'm not the old school get off my lawn guy. We need to rewind this back to 10 years ago. You know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a younger AD. I understand that um, when adults, um, meaning the, the coaches and the administrators have the freedom and ability to change programs that the student athletes need to have a certain amount of freedom, but, but you can't have a situation uh, like that. that. That becomes uh, pretty untenable. When you go for the Olympic sports who are now having to make multiple cross-country trips, most likely in conference play, and do it late nights, early mornings, as you said, how do you still sell that idea of wanting the full wellness for these uh, student athletes? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and act like um, – let me just say this. I'll even rewind this a little bit. I'm really excited about where the Big 12 is positioned and, and how – this round of conference realignment impacted the Big 12. I'm sad for the Pac-12. You know, as a college athletics fan, um, to have a, the, a conference that represented a lot of the Western-based institutions be uh, where they're at right now, the crossroads and the position they're in, that, that, like, uh, that makes me sad, candidly. Um, but uh, I'm very happy for WVU because there seems to be some kind of consolidation around how many schools there's going to be in power conferences and how many power conferences there's going to be. And we're positioned very, very well. Um, and there's been times in our history, most of the times in our history, uh, where that wasn't necessarily the case. Either uh, we were in peril or our conference was in, in peril, right? And so, um, so when you talk about student-athlete health, uh, welfare, um, their experience. I think you have to think about that too, because you know there's some institutions that were in the Pac-12 cashing 30, 40 million dollar distribution checks a couple of years ago that a year from now may be having to cut 20, 25 million dollars from their budget. So, you know that I could argue that student athlete experience is going to uh, potentially um, suffer. So. Um, I believe that there is a way for us to come together as a conference and look at scheduling that doesn't send um, track teams, uh, soccer teams, um, volleyball teams, uh, all the way to Utah to play every year. Um, we have 16 teams. Uh, not everybody sponsors every sport, but that gives you potentially two divisions of eight, gives you potentially four pods of four, there's a lot of creative things that we can, and we have an obligation, in my opinion, as, as a conference to explore. And I, I don't know where that's going to end. I've got one vote in the room when it comes to schedules. Um, but um, I have been very consistent in raising the point of um, there's a way for us to cut considerable expense and, and more importantly, to, to keep student athletes uh, in the classroom and, and out of hotels and airports um, uh, more than we do now with this expansion. This expansion does not have to mean that we have to travel further, right? Um, it could, and in my opinion, should mean we could we can actually travel less um, because we have more teams that would afford us the opportunity to not play uh, everybody round robin. Luke and then Jeff. Talking about uh, Eilert in the interim position, has there been any discussion of goals or benchmarks that should be met that can – help his chances of keeping the job beyond this one year? Yeah, he and I have had a lot of discussions um, about just expectations and, and how you run a program and, and the integrity uh, that we expect and ethically uh, what, what we're looking for. Um, you know, we have not, and, and I've been pretty consistent in saying this about every sport, I'm not a big you got to win X number of games guy or you got to um, – I know President Gee joked if you win a national championship, maybe we might remove that tag. And, and uh, that was just a, a, a off uh, – a, just a candid kind of joke he, he made with uh, Hoppy. But we're, we're all very supportive of Coach Eiler. Um, I hope that he has a great year um, and gives us a lot to think about. Um, if you go back to May, I set the tone of what the expectation for us is, and that is that um, we're going to give him full autonomy, full decision-making to do the very best he can do this season. At the conclusion of this season, we'll, we'll uh, conduct a search for a coach. Um, my hope is that uh, he does a great job and that uh, he's part of that search. Um, as the season goes along, you know, I, I evaluate every day, um, you know, and so um, – 
we'll get many chances to do that. But in terms of like a set criteria of like, here's these boxes, if you check them, you know, all off the job is yours. I just think there's too much, many, many things in sports that are beyond your control. You can't control energy, uh, injuries, can't control a call from an, a referee, um, even though there's lots of our fans that try. Uh, you know, you just can't control all of that. And so uh, we're really looking at how, what kind of job did you do controlling the things that you could control and helping young people uh, grow and get better as people uh, and as players. Um, and, and did you pour your end to them? And, and are you the kind of coach who values the person above the player? And, um, you know, all of those things go, go into uh, that decision matrix. Uh, since July, there's been a back and forth between Bob Huggins' lawyer and West Virginia's general counsel. Um, kind of asking your opinion here. Is there an in-game insight on that particular yeah so probably can't say a lot there just because there is back and forth between lawyers and i'm not a lawyer so i don't want to get in trouble uh with with our lawyers but um i'll just leave it at at this um i have a lot of admiration and respect for coach and what he accomplished here i've said this before he and i've never had a bad word um I wish that the transition could have happened differently. My guess is that he does as well. Um, and, um, you know, he's a mountaineer. Uh, sometimes uh, in, in uh, families there's disagreements and there's uh, hard feelings. And um, sometimes people get over those and sometimes they don't. And uh, my hope is that at some point uh, we can all look back on this and move past it. But. Um, I don't know in terms of an end game. I'm not in control really of either side of that. And so I don't know if there is one or, or uh, if we're near it uh, or, or where we're at on that journey. Um, I'll just say that I appreciate the contributions um, that he made to the basketball program. And, um, y you know, that, ha that, that appreciation uh, has not changed um, as we went through this. Very much, would you call it very much a fluid situation right now, Stella? As far as I know. No, nobody has uh, uh, sent me anything saying, hey, this is fully resolved. But, you know, I haven't seen anything else to say it's not either. So, Mike Rosado. Going back to um, my initial question, your answer about revenue, where do you want to spend more money that you generate? Would be one. And um, I think one of the second question was oh, um, sweets. You mentioned that. I don't know if that's just an example of something. Yeah. Um, there's been conversations before that they'd be great to have, but there might not be enough people to outsource it for X number of years in advance. Um, those are two questions, I guess. But yeah. what would you spend on and you know, where do sweets are there? You know, like yeah, so I do think there's appetite to sell sweets. Um, and uh, I don't buy into that we don't have enough people um, who can afford them to, to build more sweets. Um, I, the demographics of our alumni base and fan base is – not any different than a lot of other Big 12 schools, many that sell a lot more club seats and suites than we do. It's more about availability. And I can tell you, I get asked a lot um, and uh, about uh, the opportunity to, to, to buy uh, suites. And so it's something we're looking at. Um, we, we, we feel like um, if there's a path where we could get a big gift or two, then, then you can build those and they'll not only cash flow from the suite rental, but they can be a positive to the bottom line. You 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 pay your uh, your mortgage, so to speak. Your your uh, and and then you still have money left to contribute. Um, it, it, as the revenue comes in, there's a variety of places that you can spend it. And about every metric you would look at, um, we're probably below our peers. So so in terms of spend of, of spending, some not not far below. And so some we were closer, but some were way off. Um, and so, um, and, and what happens is uh, you, you have a budget, I believe right now out of the 10, we're ninth. Well, then if you take out debt service and travel, we move to 10th, all right? So um, anywhere where you spend, let's just say fifth, there's somewhere else you're spending 10 and quite a bit below 10. 
um, because they're all the levers are connected. I try to explain this to coaches all the time. You're coming to me asking for a decision on this one item, but what you don't realize is it's all dominoes and they're all connected. And, and anywhere we spend more over here is we guys spend less over here. Um, and so, um, but I, you know, my intent would be to invest really back into the programs um, and, the, and the support staff that helps the program. So for instance, we, um, the explosion of uh, video and graphic design. And we've, we, we have invested recently in our creative and video department, but if we could add 10 positions there today, we could keep those people busy. Like there's not, there's w so much more demand than supply for what we can actually provide because people, they love that content. And um, I mean, Mike was, when I came in here, was talking about kind of the, the coaches at this point, they want to do a graphic for Dog Day. They want to do a graphic for National Donut Day, which I'm for. I, I think we should highlight donuts. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, so there's just always something. Uh, and so, um, the, but those are the areas where there's a return, right? Fans engage in that, recruits engage in that. So there's an ROI. Um, so um, I would say really if I had to hone in, it would be on <coughs> – the, the player development areas, so nutrition, strength and conditioning, sports medicine, and then in those digital and creative areas, uh, that's probably the areas where uh, I would highlight as, as areas that we really could spend and also see an ROI for all sports, not just football and basketball, but our Olympic sports. I mean, they need that stuff uh, too, and, and there's much less availability for them than there is for football and basketball. You mentioned that earlier. Yeah, so um, I know Heather uh, like we've uh, we've we've known each other for probably man it's probably eight or nine years now, um, and uh, so I've told her uh, that we 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 want to play uh, as as much and as long as they want to play. Um, I called her. Um, several months back to express our interest in continuing the basketball series. Football didn't come up at, at that time because it was more uh, of, a, of a basketball uh, quite, uh, perspective. But um, I think there's – I know there's willingness on our part to extend in pretty much every sport, our, our series with Pitt. Um, I believe that's the case on their end. Uh, she was, you know, pretty positive when I talked to her, but but we probably need to follow back up and circle up and, and see what – what that really looks like. I don't know if that means every year, every other year, if they want to take a break off and then, then resume, um, you know, we'll just we'll have to see. We have time for one more question. Anybody else? Okay, right here, Cody. Better make it a good one, Cody. <laughs> Mike was going to ask another one. I mean, the guy's like an MMA fighter up there. You don't want to take his, his question. Um, I wanted to ask if you had read Senator Manchin's uh, bill and if you had any thoughts on Senator President Gee. Input yeah, so I've read um, summaries and highlights of all of the bills that are out there. There's three primary ones. Um, uh, but I've read uh, Senator Manchin's um, in great detail because he was asking uh, and his staff was asking for feedback in real time from not just me, but primarily from President Gee or General Counsel, uh, all of those people. Um I think uh, Senators Manchin and Tuberville did a good job of trying to provide protections for student athletes, but also um, trying to provide some guardrails that, that make sense. Um, there's going to be some give and take, and um, I don't necessarily want to, to restrict uh, student athletes. I mean, I, I've been on record saying this, we should be in the business of providing opportunities for student athletes, and opportunities at this point does include NIL. Um, but the system we have right now where um, nobody knows what's really going on, there is no um, assurances when someone's promised something that they're getting delivered what was promised. There's no penalty, uh, nor required registrations uh, for people who are involved in, in negotiating some of these deals. Some of the percentages being charged to student athletes is obscene. Um, I just think that there's a lot more guardrails that, that could really make the process um, better for everybody. And so, um, you know, I'm supportive of the efforts of, of uh, uh, Senators Manchin and, and Senators Tuberville. Um, 
and um, I think President Gee as, as well. Thank you guys. Have a uh, great what's left of summer. <laughs> One week. You got to go to work next week.